Hey, hey, math friends. So our learning target today is in probability still, and we're going to compare this thing called independent versus a dependent event. So what is the difference between an independent and a dependent event? An independent event is if the occurrence of one event does not affect or impact the likelihood of the other event. So completely independent things. For example, if you were spinning on a spinner, and you wanted to know how your results of the spinner impact the results of drawing a marble out of the bag, they'd be independent because they're just very different events. They don't impact each other. Versus dependent events is if the, like, the occurrence of one event does affect the likelihood of the other. So for example, if we are going to draw three winners out of a bag, so we have a bag of uh, sticks, and if your name is on the stick, you win or some, some sort of e event happening where there's, we're drawing winners out, out of a bag. Once the first winner comes out of the bag, it's going to impact the probabilities of future winners. So um, it decreases your likelihood of winning in the future. Likewise, if a loser comes out of the bag, poor choice of words there, but if a loser comes out of the bag, then that increases your chances of winning in the future. So there is an impact based on what happened. Example one, if you flip heads on one coin and tails on another coin, do they impact each other? So you have your first coin here, and we want to know what's the probability that you get heads on this coin and tails on this coin. Do they impact each other? Is there an impact on each, each coin? We have a one out of two chance of getting heads on this coin, and you have a one out of two chance of getting tails on the other coin. There is absolutely no impact on the result of those because they're separate coins the result of one is not going to affect the results of the other. Now, we're not even using the same coin. Now, as I was stating before, in example two, so we would say in this one, we would say independent. They don't impact each other at all. Example two very much has an effect. Your, te your teacher chooses one student to lead a group, and it chooses another student to lead another group. So if we think about drawing out of the bag here of the student, and the teacher chooses the leader out of the group. First of all, there's one less student in the bag. So let's say there's 30 total kids in the class and we choose a winner out of the bag. Now, when we go to draw again for uh, the, the next leader, now that one student is out, there's only 29 kids left in the group or left to choose from. So that definitely impacts probabilities because the denominator just changed. So this would be a consider consideration of we have a dependent event here. What happens on the first draw is going to impact the probabilities of the future draws. Okay. So now we're going to identify as dependent or independent events. If you choose a blue marble from a bag and you set it aside, what is the probability that you choose a green marble from the bag? So we're asking, what's the probability of blue? You take the blue out of the bag. So let's draw a picture of what we have here. Let's say we have some marbles in the bag. We have a couple blues, sorry about this, and a couple greens. Okay, so this is what we have. We say right now, what's the probability that we get blue when we draw out of the bag? You have a two out of five chance that you get blue. Awesome. So let's say you do get blue. When you go to draw the next time, does that change your probability of getting a green? So we would reach in from the bag, and what's the probability of green? Is there an impact on the probability of getting green? Well, yeah, because now there's only four marbles in the bag. There were five. Now there's only four. So now you have a two out of four chance. So it actually increases the probability because there's more greens in the bag out of the total. So we would say that this is definitely dependent. Drawing a marble out of the bag and keeping it out is going to affect or impact future draws. Awesome. Next one. Probability that we roll a five on a number cube. So here's our dice. Don't judge my drawing here, but here's our die, dice. The probability that we get a five is you have a one out of six chance. Cool. Set it down. You then you have this spinner where this is blue and this is red. Actually, it's blue, Miss Wilkman. This is red. What's the probability that we get blue on the spinner? We get one half. Oh my goodness. Probability of getting blue, we get a one out of two chance. Do these impact each other? No, independent of each other, completely independent. They're not even the same um, event 
The left event is a dice, the right event is a spinner. They don't impact each other in any capacity. Where we do have an impact is if we're drawing out of the same bag, and if we keep it out before the next draw, now we have an impact. So we're going to talk about how that looks mathematically. So probability of independent events. All right, so here we go. What about when things do not impact each other? Like when you're using a spinner and you're using a dice, no impact on each other. Pretty simple math. We just multiply. So that's what we're going to learn how to do today. So the probability of both events, event A, the spinner, event B, the dice, something like that. You just find the probability of A and you multiply it by the probability of B. Quite simple. So let's take a look at how that goes. So what is the probability if you flip two coins? Okay, so two separate coins. We have independent event. And what's the probability that you get heads on the first coin and you get tails on the second coin? What's the probability you get heads and one tails? So first, this is my first flip. That's my second flip, separate coins. So probability on the first coin that we get heads. Mathematically speaking, you have two things that could happen on any coin, heads or tails. What's the probability that I get heads on the first coin? One half. One out of two chance of getting heads. Two sides to the coin, one of the sides is head. We multiply that by the other probability. What's the probability that I pick up the second coin? That I get tails. Two sides to a head, or two sides to a coin, heads and tails. Only one of those is tails. That gives me a one out of four chance. Multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. And when I do that, I end up with 25% chance that I would get heads on the first coin, tails on the second coin. Pause the video if you're struggling. Okay. Independent events. We multiply. Down here now. You flip a coin. You roll a number cube. Completely independent events. They're not even the same thing. They're not even the same event. Okay, cool. So now we just know we can just multiply, right? So what is the probability that you flip tails on the first row? So the probability that we get tails on the first row and the probability that we get less than five on the second row, we multiply the probabilities. Cool. Please pause the video if I go too fast. I am going to go at this speed because otherwise the video is going to be two hours long. So I'm going to continue to go at my speed. You just pause the video. Just pause, 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 and write. Pause and write. Please pause. All right, cool. What's the probability that we get tails? Boom. Tails. How do I get tails there? Well, there are two sides to every cone. coin. We have a one out of two chance that it's tails. We set the coin down. It's independent of what happens on the dice. They're not even the same event. On any dice, the outcomes, we could get these six outcomes. So six is my denominator. It's asking how many of them are less than five. It does not say equal to. So less than five would be that one, that one, that one. Those four are less than five. Oh boy, might need to, well, it is what it is. Four of them, four of them are less than five. Those four are less than five. To calculate probabilities, then we multiply the top, we multiply the bottom, and then we turn that into a percentage. So when we do that, we get 0.33, which is 33% of the times we would get a tail on the coin and a number less than six on the dice. I can't write that all out. So 33% chance for the independent events, not dependent on each other. Okay. So if you need to rewind, do that. But otherwise, now let's go talk about what happens when we don't replace it. We take, we pick the captain of the soccer team and now the captain's gone out of the bag. So now the denominator changes and that's what we're going to talk about next called the dependent event. So the dependent of event, we spy, if we want to find the event probability of both events again, we pick one and now there aren't as many left in the bag, what happens? Well, we find the probability of the first event. That's easy. And then we have to adjust the denominator and find the probability of the second event after the first person is gone or the first 
you know, marble or whatever it happens to be is gone. So we're still going to multiply. It's just that we have to make a little bit of an adjustment on that second one. So we're still going to multiply the probabilities. So I'm going to show you a pretty good example here of a flower vase. I think you can see it pretty well. So here's our flower vase. It has three different types of colors in it. Let's see how many there are. What, 28? It looks like 28 total flowers. We're going to probably need that. You randomly choose a flower from the vase to take home. Your fran friend randomly chooses another flower from the vase to take home. What is the probability that you choose purple and your friend chooses yellow? So what's the probability that you choose purple and your friend chooses yellow? I tried to color code it, guys, but that just didn't work. So we're still going to multiply the probabilities. But because they're dependent on each other, that we're losing a flower out of the vase and the denominator's changing, we're going to have to do some adjustments before we multiply. So let's go ahead and figure out the purple flowers in the vase. Purple flowers in the vase, we have seven purple out of 28 flowers. You have seven to choose from. Cool. So you take one out. You take a purple out, which means that, that we still have six purples in the bag. We did not impact our yellow flowers or our pink flowers. But now we only have 27 flowers in the vase because I'm taking mine home. So the next question is, what is the probability that my friend chooses yellow? We only have 27 in the bag now, and we have nine yellow. So this did impact the probabilities of getting yellow for my friends because the denominator changed. The number of yellow flowers did not change, but the denominator changes. So now, how do we, so this is my friend getting yellow. So we multiply. We multiply the tops. We multiply the bottoms. So that results in 63 out of, where's my calculator? I need it for this one. Yuck. 28 times 27 is 756. And we're looking for a percent here. What percent? And so I'm going to skip the decimal just because of space. So 63 divided by 756. I'm going to multiply by 100 and I'm going to round it to the nearest whole. It would be 8% of the time. It would happen in that order that I would choose purple and my friend would choose yellow. That is my first example of dependent events. All right, cool. Let's use the same scenario now. And we know that we have 28 flowers, right? 28 flowers. So what's the probability now that both flowers are purple, both for you and your friend? So what's the probability that we go purple, purple? It'd be awesome if I could color code it, but the stylist is just too frustrating. If we were in the class and using the smart board, I could totally do that. So you, you're going to pick purple. Friend, friend's going to pick purple. So when you go to pick, there's no change in what's happening. Seven purples out of 28. Cool. You grab your purple. You take it away. We have six purples left. We have 27 flowers left. So when your friend reaches in, to grab your, the friend's purple, we friend only has six to choose from. So there's a change happening there in 27 flowers. So it definitely changes the probability that your friend gets purple because there's one less and there's one less flower overall. So we multiply the tops. I can do that in my head. Multiply the bottoms. I forgot what that was on the previous screen. 756. Cool. And so we're looking for what is the percent of times that we both would get purple. And I'm gonna round that to the nearest percent just for sake of making it easier. It comes to 5.55, but I'm gonna call it 6% of the time we both would get purple. So we have a lower percent chance that we both get purple versus I get purple, she gets yellow. So dependent events, what happens with dependent events is the denominator changes. We still multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, get the percent, but just be aware of that. Um, let's see, I might jump ahead here because we're already at 14 minutes. I already got that covered. Maybe we'll try, that one's too much going on there. Um, 
going to pause the video for a minute so I can figure out which one to do. All right, let's do this one. Fish tank. You can see that we have six, nope, five total goldfish and redfish in a tank. Well, you randomly choose two fish from the bowl. Obviously, you have to pretend like you can't see them, right? So when we say randomly, that means you're not looking. or Otherwise, you would get 100%, or I would hope you would. What's the probability that the first one is red and the second one is gold? Now, once we take it out, we are not replacing it, okay? So let's think about that. We're going to multiply these probabilities to each other. Cool. So red, we have one out of five that are red in the tank. One out of five. This is a dependent event because once we take a fish out of the tank, it's going to change the denominator. So red, fish, gone. That leaves us with four fish left in the tank. What is the probability then that on my second draw, I draw a gold fish? Well, four out of four. <laughs> I have a perfect, I mean, I will draw a gold fish, right? We call that a certain event on the second draw. So the probability then that this would happen is that we get four, multiply the tops, over 20, multiply the bottoms. And when you do that, right, four divided by 20, some of you can do that in your head, which is awesome. You end up with what? 2.2, which gives you a 20% chance that that would happen or a one fifth chance that you would choose red fish out first and a gold fish out second. Notice that the denominator changed. So that's a super awesome example. And then I think I'm going to do one more. I'm just going to pick which one that I want. Don't want that one. I might come back to that one. I'm going to pause it again. All right, this will be our last problem today. You randomly draw a marble from a bag containing two red marbles and five green. So let's just check it out. We have red, red, and we have five greens. Okay, cool. So that gives us, what, seven marbles? All right. What is the probability if you put the marble back? So this becomes a, a independent now because you're going to put the marble back before the next person draws. So we can assume that, the, that everybody has an equal chance to win because once a winner comes out of some games, your chance reduces of winning. But you're going to put it back. So, D, so independent. Okay, cool. So what's the probability that the first draw is green and the second draw is red. So these aren't separate questions. These are, these are the same question. I just wrote it kind of in a funny order. Come on, Penn. Come on. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first probability multiplied by the second probability is what we're looking at here. So what's the probability that the first draw is green? We have seven total. We have five that are green. Cool probability that a green is drawn on the first draw. Because it's independent, we're going to put the green back in, which means before we draw, we still have seven on the second draw. So it doesn't change impact the probabilities. That's why it's independent, no impact. So what's the probability that I get red on the second draw? Those two reds. No change on the denominator because we're putting the marble back in. So we multiply the tops. Cool. We multiply the bottoms. Awesome. I'm going to divide that out in my calculator. So we get 10 divided by 49 is 0 0.20, which becomes 20%. So essentially you have a 20% chance on this independent event that you will get green on the first draw, put it back in, red on the second draw. So our learning target today is independent and dependent events. Just remember that we're just multiplying the probabilities and if it's dependent, there's a difference between dependent and independent. Independent does not impact each other at all. No impact. The denominator is not going to change. No impact. But dependent, we really have to be thinking about what happens with the denominator. Did we put the marble back in? If not, it's going to impact the next situation. That is our learning target today on I Can Identify Independent and Dependent Events. Have a glorious night. Right.